Lagos Talks 91.3. Federal Executive Council, the FEC, has approved the Finance Bill 2022, meant to support a smooth implementation of the 2023 budget. Brief in the press at the end of Wednesday's FEC meeting, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zenab Ahmed, highlighted some of the proposed provisions of the bill, adding that the Finance Bill will be transmitted to the National Assembly for its consideration and passage. The bill that we presented before Council today has uh, five focus areas, uh, uh, including tax equity reforms, climate change and green growth uh, uh, provisions, uh, job creation and economic uh, growth uh, reforms, reforming tax incentives, as well as generating revenue and enhancing tax administration. The purpose of the tax equity reforms is to combat tax evasion and aggressive tax planning practices that some companies operating in Nigeria uh, are involved in, but also utilizing, enabling the utilization of ICT tools and using international best practice to assess taxpayers' tax on a fair and reasonable basis. The finance minister also disclosed that the ministry got approval for a whistleblowing draft bill to strengthen the fight against corruption and ensure the protection of whistleblowers. This memo has been reviewed by council and approved uh, with a provision to ensure alignment with the Evidence Act. Uh, the purpose of the whistleblower uh, bill, uh, uh, operationalizing and putting in place a bill, is to strengthen the fight against corruption, to also uh, enable uh, protection for whistleblowers that provide information for use by, by government. The uh, problem that we found is that uh, people are concerned about their safety as a result of providing the information. So this uh, bill is critical to ensure the effectiveness of the intention of the whistleblower policy. Mrs. Ahmed Zainab also revealed that the council approved 9.24 billion R for the 2022-2023 group life insurance cover for all Nigerian public servants. The Senate has asked the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to upwardly adjust the limit on cash withdrawal in its new policy in response to public outcry. The Nigerian Senate last week directed its Committee on Banking and Finance to interrogate the policy while screening the two deputy governors re-nominated by President Muhammad Buhari for confirmation. However, following the adoption of the resolutions of the committee report, after a heated debate by senators on the proposed policy yesterday, the lawmakers have asked the Apex Bank to make upward adjustments to the cash withdrawal limit. In his submissions during the debate, Senator Ajibola Bashu said a proposed threshold of 100,000 nara and 500,000 nara withdrawal per week for individuals and corporate bodies respectively was unrealistic. While in his contribution, Senator Adamu Buka Chua had warned that the proposed policy, if not suspended, may trigger revolt from rural dwellers. The CBN had last week pegged maximum daily withdrawals via ATMs and POS terminals at 20,000 Nara, while directing banks to ensure that weekly over-the-counter cash withdrawals by individuals and corporate entities do not exceed 100,000 Nara and 500,000 Nara respectively. The Police Service Commission, the PSC, has approved the promotion of 745 senior police officers to the next ranks. After scrutiny, the PSC also considered and approved proper placement for five commissioners of police and deputy commissioners of police, even as it also treated 14 appeals and petitions and nine pending disciplinary matters from dismissed and servant police officers. PSC spokesperson Ikejuku Ani had said the decisions were some of the high points of the 18th plenary meeting of the commission, which ended in Abuja on Tuesday, December 13, and presided over by the commission's acting chairman, Justice Clara Bata Ogumbi. 
The Federal Road Safety Corps, the FRSC, says heavy-duty trucks and trailers will not be allowed to use the second Niger Bridge when open for temporary use on the 15th of December. The Corps, in a statement issued by its Sector Commander Delta Command, Bassi Essiet, said the temporary opening of the bridge was to ease traffic load and ensure that travellers get to their destination on time. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatini Fashla had last week said the new bridge will be open to traffic on the midnight of today, December 15, for 30 days. And similarly, the Federal Ministry of Environment says the proposed fourth mainland bridge in Lagos will provide the backbone for optimization of integrated transportation system, employment opportunities and address environmental degradation, amongst other challenges. Minister of Environment Mohamed Abdullahi, who was represented by a director in the ministry, Celestine Gumwalk, also said the fourth mainland bridge project which is a 32-kilometer road network and bridge, will ensure sustainable social economic development. We are all aware of the serious negative impacts of traffic situation in Lagos. Therefore, the project, when completed, is expected to promote economic growth and development, enhance quality of lives of the residents and their productivity, and reduce traffic-related accidents, improve security situation, and to serve as a catalyst for short-term and long-term employment opportunity, as well as reduce environmental degradation in all facets of the economy. Special Advisor to the State Governor, Works and Infrastructure, Aramide Adioye, represented by the Project Director in the Ministry, Tokumbo Ajanaku, said the project, which cuts across Lagos and Ogun states, will enhance connectivity and reduce travel time. The Fort Millen Bridge is an aggressive, intentional, and deliberate effort by Lagos State in the last 20 years to solve a major issue in traffic. And please note that on behalf of the governor of Lagos State, Mr. Obajide Ulushara Sawobu, we know that your coming is to add value. It is not just an appraisal, but to add value to what we are doing so that at the very end, we have a much better project. And on to other news, the presidential candidate of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, on Wednesday had his campaign rally in Niger State. Uh, the event happened at the trade fair complex in Mina, the state capital, and drew a crowd which gathered to catch a glimpse of the former Lagos State Governor. However, unlike previous campaigns of recent, uh, Tinubu made a brief appearance in the North Central State and also did not deliver a speech. In a swift reaction, the Director of Media and Publicity APC Presidential Campaign Council, Bayo Onanuga, had explained that the presidential candidate was not rushed off the stage due to health concerns at his rally in Mina. According to Onanuga on the official website of the APC presidential candidate and his running mate, Senator Kashim Shetiba, the crowd which turned up to welcome Tinubu at the rally was so massive that the former governor of Lagos State had to address them briefly. The Labour Party has announced the postponement of its presidential campaigns in Ikiti and Ondo states, earlier slated for today, 15th and 16th December, respectively. The party, in a brief statement on its verified Twitter handle on Wednesday, while regretting the inconveniences caused by the postponement, said a new date will be announced. The postponement comes after a campaign by the party in Kogi State on Tuesday, where its presidential candidate, Peter Obi, promised to increase minimum wage and prioritize production over consumption. The children of the late Mrs. Kudirat Abiola have dragged the current administration to the ECOWAS Court of Justice in Abuja over the unlawful killing of their mother. Uh, Kafila Abiola, Moriam Abiola and Hadi Abiola are suing for themselves and on behalf of other children of the matriarch. In a suit filed on their behalf by their counsel, Femi Falano, senior advocate of Nigeria, the children are challenging the violation of the fundamental human rights to life and dignity of human person of the late Mrs. Kujarat Abiola. No date has been fixed for the hearing of the suit. 
Outside of Nigeria, Ghana's President Anakufo Addo has said that African countries must wean themselves off begging the West to earn global respect and change poor perceptions about the continent. He made the remarks during the opening of the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit in Washington, D.C. Akufo Addo had urged great solidarity amongst Africans to address shared aspirations. The President also said the continent had skills and manpower but needed concerted political will to make Africa work. Akufuado's remarks came on the day that the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, agreed to give Ghana a $3 billion loan to alleviate an unprecedented economic downturn in a West African country. Dozens of African leaders are currently in Washington to discuss cooperation with the U.S. amid growing Chinese and Russian influence on the continent. In sports news this morning, Super Eagles defender Zaydu Sanusi has been ruled out of Porto's League Cup clash against Vizela on Friday owing to injury. Sanusi has been out of action since the 1st of November when he sustained an injury in Porto's crunchy UEFA Champions League tie against Atletico Madrid. The 25-year-old left-back was subsequently ruled out of action for at least a month after it was confirmed that he had hurt his adductor muscle. Sanusi has missed Porto's last five games. And still trending in sports, France defeated Morocco in the second of the FIFA 2022 World Cup semi-finals last night. Just after Lionel Messi and Argentina breezed past Croatia on Tuesday, the Atlas Lions had made history as the first African and Arab country to reach the point, while the Le Bleus were looking to reach back-to-back -back finals. Unfortunately, Morocco could not prove their mettle once again at the semis. The Moroccans have been the surprise package in Qatar and were very much the underdogs against the defending champions who are chasing their third title and only the third successful title defense in the tournament's history. In business news, a Twitter account which tracked Elon Musk's private jet has been suspended for violating unspecified Twitter rules. The at Elon Jet account had more than half a million followers. Its owner, Jack Sweeney, who's 20, used flight tracking information to tweet every time Musk's jet took off and landed. Uh, Sweeney confirmed on his personal Twitter account on Wednesday that the profile had been suspended. It comes a month after Mr. Elon Musk, who bought Twitter for 44 billion US dollars this year, pledged to keep the account running, even though it was a direct personal safety risk. Elon Musk previously tweeted he had chose to do so because of his commitment to free speech. Lagos Talks 91.3